The Square Ball Podcast. Let's crown ourselves a hero and villain of the week now then, shall we? With the uh, TSB jury assembled, that's us. Set to rule on matters in football. That's why we're, that's why we're here. Um, ready to cast your judgment? Yeah. What have we got this week then? Don't know, everyone's all right, aren't they? Right, fine. We just keep... We just keep... <laughs> We just keep winning games and teams are fairly inoffensive. For thanks the most for, part. Uh, thanks so, for joining us on the show. We'll see you next time. I'm going to say, I don't know. Sheffield Wednesday fans, they threw some stuff at Melier, didn't they? Right, let's start at the start then. The Ken Bates Villain of the Week Award. Who are you putting forward? Sheffield Wednesday fans for throwing things, Michael. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Bit naughty, isn't it? We'd never uh, do that. No, we've never. We've never our behaviour at Hillsborough has always been exemplary. Absolutely. People, yeah. How to treat a goalkeeper. We wrote the book on it. Yeah, and of course, Ellen Road. Flawless behaviour. Always. There's never been any throwing of anything. Nope. Um, so, that, I mean, they, they've been bad this season as well, just generally, with um, the racist abuse and the uh, Bradley Lowry stuff as well. Set of wrong ones. That sounds fair. Anybody you want to put forward then, Rob? Um, slightly left field one, but I was sort of writing about him this week. But Max Verber, who... I generally found pretty inoffensive when he was at Leeds. I didn't really mind him. Seemed fine when he came in. A bit shit towards the end, but everyone was. But it really annoyed me at A, just walking away from the club in the summer and then telling Brushy a bunch of Gladbach fans that he's a leader and a warrior and he's going to fight for everything in this shirt, which is basically what he said when he joined Leeds before crying off six months later. And then was writing about some of our defenders from last season in comparison to our defenders this season and was looking at what they did at the weekend and Verbe is such a warrior, such a leader. Gladbach have like the third worst defensive record in Bundesliga. They played Cologne at the weekend, conceded another three. Cologne are the lowest goal scorers in the Bundesliga. I think they've scored like 19 all season. Six of them have been against Verbe's Munchen Gladbach. <laughs> and I'm looking at the table now and you're right, yeah, 19 goal scores. Mm. Yeah. And to add insult to injury now, Gladbach seems it seems to have finally dawned on them that Berber might be shit and there's stories in the press, German press now that they might not buy him in the summer because they'd rather not spend like 12 million quid on him which I don't want him to come back to Leeds anymore so I think stop being a useless waster and sort your life out and maybe you can leave permanently I mean there's a chance Jesse will get a job and then mm. he'll probably buy him which yeah that's the only reason he ended up at Leeds in the first place I was going to say he can become like his Paddy Kenny can't he he'll just take him wherever he goes to try and fix things. I can't be the only one who, as a secondary motivation for getting promoted, is so we have the whip hand when it comes to all these bastards coming back. Mm. So they can all come back to us like a shamed husband <laughs> returning, having left the marital home, to go chasing that bit of skirt down the road, did you? Did you go after thinking you could get it? And they're coming back and they're going in the spare room, stroke reserves Yeah, for me. I, a bit of me would like to just ruin their careers, refuse mm. to sell them. But I'm, I'm aware that's completely ridiculous because you, we could be doing the money, couldn't we? But yeah, to just say to Verba, like, yeah, you, we, we value you at 12 million. No one's willing to pay it. So you're um, you're in with the under 23s. Forever. Sells about that. You can you can go be a warrior next to Chris Moore. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Michael, you've gone for Wednesday fans. Rob, you've gone for Verba. Strong candidate, I feel like. Because mm. I mean, because I'm, I'm vindictive, quite frankly. Barry, it's a pure pettiness yeah. sort of shout. I mean, Barry Bannon was fairly well nominated as well, but not for much for for the hair. It's the hair, isn't hair it? Hair annoys yeah. me. Um, having Trump as a hair idol. Was, Dick, Dickie was, said, "Use it or lose it, pal." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that worked with hair. Yeah, no, he's trying. I think he's trying <laughs> to use it, but it's he's losing it nonetheless. Mm. But, I, I, to be fair, I never really used mine, and then it went, so maybe that was retaliation. But it's like Prince William. I mean, Lord only knows what he's been up to re mm -hmm. recently. Makes you think. Um, but he, need, he needs to get the clippers he, on that. But he's not allowed, is he? Royal protocol. It's not a royal look, is it? No. The old skin. What, what would you advise him to do? Well, obviously... Get the clippers on just it. Just get it get it off. Yeah. But you know, or, or buy a dead woman's wig. Yes. That's an option. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. But yeah, Barry Bannon, um, Mikel nominates me as well, saying this is more of an, a career achievement nomination in that he continually reminds me of when, when we were shit, yet he keeps delivering perfect threatening corners into our box. Yeah. He could be, he'd be quite good on special teams, wouldn't he? 
He's quite a decent passer of the ball, isn't he, Bannon? He's, but he's just like a, he's like a championship Stephen McPhail. Yeah. In that he's he's got a very nice left foot, but then he's not got a huge amount else. I thought Stephen McPhail was the championship Stephen McPhail. To be <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was better than that for a time. He got he had injuries. He had injuries to poor Stephen. Nice shout for Jamie Vardy from Jelly. You're a 56 year old chav. Give up and let Leicester crash and burn in peace. <laughs> yeah, fair shout. Um, Jake in Florida annoyed at Diego Urente for scoring that Thunder Bastard for Roma. Mm-hmm. Where did that come from? Fair point. On that again, just looking at that game though, Urente did need to score that because he'd been just bullied off the ball for uh, Fiorentina's second. So again, a very Diego Urente performance. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? Given how much you feel like you you kind of relate to to Joe Rodon and his slightly unhinged brother, um, but he's a very relatable character, isn't he? You know, the blood on the face, you know, all that kind of thing. He's, he's, it feels like he's putting himself on the line every time. And he, as we said before, he's kind of got the face of a man who's stormed the beaches at Normandy, that kind of thing. Compare it to like Robin Cock and Diego Llorente, who both to me, when I think about them, seem completely inscrutable. Like I've got no idea what they're ever thinking. They kind of exist. They are like football manager players, aren't they? Yeah. Sort of Almost exist like, on bo- a computer. like box, like yeah. box, yeah. yeah. And you, you feel like the only people who actually rate them are people who have seen them on a computer game and not in real life. <laughs> Mm. There was that brief bit of Urente looking good, wasn't there? Mm. That was weird. When you look back at it, it was an aberration that that period of being like, I think he might be our best defender. And then they just came back the next season. Everyone was like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> nope, he's not even he's not even a, a vaguely qualified defender." And I suppose that's a sign of of not being that good. Is that sometimes you're good, sometimes you're not. Consistency. Mm. He never felt like he he probably had it. Nor indeed probably the um, the mental fortitude to be good every week. I don't know. Strange, just a very, I feel like it's a very strange sign in Zimmoncock. Having basically nominated Bannon and Vardy for being old, there are also nominations for Danny Rowe for being a football manager and being younger than, than this Dan who was nominated him. Right. And also James Beadle, who is the goalkeeper um, for looking like... He's a child. For looking like a child. Basically. Yeah. yeah. He was quite decent as well, wasn't he? Made some good saves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Paddy Bamford's golden boot has suggested Sheffield Wednesday have broken child labour laws laws by playing an eight-year-old in goal. (laughs) The least of their crimes, to be honest. Mm. The least of their crimes. Um, We need to probably give it to Sheffield Wednesday fans because we might not play them again next year. Or ever again, for that matter. Potentially not. They might just just finally do the decent thing and merge the Sheffield clubs. Yeah, just be nicer. Be nicer. uh, You know, hands across Yorkshire. And also, they weren't... as, As much as they were not nice in the stadium, they were not angry enough for propaganda right I was hoping for a bit more rage so we're just saying Sheffield Wednesday fans saw it out exactly saw it out. one way or another right um, let's have a quick dive into the scores for the Sheffield Wednesday game who got the uh, the man of the match Empadu Empadu uh, 8.61 out of 10 yeah and Rodon pair of them top scoring again um, 8.18 for Rodon those two have slowly but surely just crept up to the top of the um of the leaderboard as Somerville's forms dipped off. It's quite interesting. It was like it was attacking players at one point at the top of this with um Somerville and uh, Dan James, but they've they've dropped down in recent weeks and Rodon is now top but only by 0.03. Yeah, everybody's over fared, everybody fared pretty well against Sheffield Wednesday. Nobody really scoring under six. Uh, My instinct at this uh, stage is that Ampadu probably is player of the season. He feels like he's Are you trying to like No, I, I'm trying to You are, aren't you? There's nothing in it. Trying to force the vote. I'm just saying though, it might, that'd be my instinct because he's just he's played more or less every minute, hasn't he? As well. Yeah, I think between him and Rodon, feels like they come as a pair now, mm. and they've both been just ace all season, uh, as reflected by the fact their scores are so close. Yeah, God, yeah, only point zero three in it. Wow. Um, and slowly climbing in over the last few weeks as well, like from admittedly low season averages at the start, but you know you've got Bamford and Furpo and. Um, Matteo Joseph, people who were doing quite badly early on, they, they're slowly climbing. So it's not been a bad season. Yeah, and the, like Matteo Joseph being a sub for for the most part is what's hindered his scores because the subs always tend to score an average of, of lower, don't they? Mm. It's the members, our TSB Plus members, by the way, who send us these ratings in after every game. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anyone who can come on for a debut and score lower than 2.13 to finish lower than Cody Drama. I think... That would be like one of us getting our debut. I was going to say, I think it's unlikely anyone's going to any, anyone's going to make a debut this year and then fare that badly. You forget, don't you, that we won at Ipswich. That was the game, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the game when he did that. Bloody hell. It felt like we didn't really have our house in order at that point. And maybe Farker didn't quite know what the squad was made of. Whereas mm-hmm. now you feel like he probably has it 
the, sort of laser focus. The appearances from Leo Hielder as well. A Sunderland fans are having mm. to go at him saying he's nowhere near good enough yep. in the bits I watched. Yeah. I was I was thinking yesterday about how we all felt at half time against Cardiff in the opening day of the season. Mm. We just thought, oh my fucking God, what is this season going to be? <laughs> We're knackered here. Like this could be a really long season. You look I, at it now and think, like, Jesus I, Christ. I thought, no, no, I, I don't know. I thought this ain't great, but we're not performing anywhere near to our potential. I think I, I still had some faith at that point that well, this Scott would get was better. It was 2-0. It, it was 2-0. And we didn't have any players, basically, did we? We looked better than them, though, weirdly. That's the point I think I'm, I'm, I might be making here. Yeah, that, I, feel, I feel like on the they sort of... It was a bit of smash and grab, wasn't it, their two-goal lead? Yeah, because I mean, we've seen in the Premier League before, like, you can be punished by any team due to the like the quality of the players up there. Like, you can concede one chance and can concede one goal. But I th- I'm fairly sure we were making chances and we broadly looked all right against Cardiff, but we'd been sucker punched. And I thought, surely we can't be sucker punched like by teams this bad. <laughs> then you did no. watch the Birmingham game a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Cardiff are a great bunch of lads anyway, as we'll come mm. on to with the Heroes of the Week. They right, get cool. nominated. Well, I was going to say that those scores that we mentioned just before there do feed into the Hero of the Week um, th- thinkings, uh, thoughts, Leeds candidates for, uh, for Hero of the Week, which is broadly how this works. <laughs> Yeah, more or less. But yeah, the Welsh, including Cardiff, get lots of nominations. I think is a. Can you give it to a nation? Ampadu Road on plus Cardiff. It's a strong week from yeah. Saint know. David's Day a couple of weeks back as well, wasn't it? That should probably been addressed a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> right. What Saint David's Day or, or us? Well, if if we're going to factor that in, I, f- I feel like you can't. maybe they've been inspired by Saint David's Day. That's given them the the boost that they needed mm. to to deliver these kind of performances maybe yeah but we do is nominated the people of wales mostly the ones in our squad but even them characters at cardiff after that winner um i have welsh grandparents too so i'm nominating a quarter of myself the moment that gave me the most chaos last weekend was the the cardiff ipswich game yeah i sort of wish i'd been watching it but just following it on my phone was quite fun too because i get to i was at my in-laws and for some reason their signals rubbish at their house and i wasn't on the wi-fi so it, it, I was refreshing it, and it, it sort of flashed up that it was two one, but then it had disappeared, and I was like, oh, what? I don't, I don't know what's going on here because it, it, like the app had crashed or something. So I had to kind of go out to a different bit of the house, and I was refreshing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> came back in, old kitty. As nice as that was, I enjoyed watching it on the TV. Yeah, I had a similar experience to you, Dan, where I was sort of laying on the sofa, quite tired, thinking, oh, I can't be bothered doing out today, and then that happened and I was just sort of jumping around the living room not really knowing why feeling very conflicted because it was Cardiff but very happy nonetheless I think uh, added to Huddersfield helping us with promotion last time it's nice that some sort of championship bastard rivals are are willing to weigh in on our promotion bid sometimes I was just screaming at the telly going show us the Ipswich fans show us the Ipswich fans (laughs) and of course I mean as much as we've we've punished the Sheffield Wednesday fans there in the first part of this we will be Cheering those great bunch of lads on this weekend, won't we? Of course, yeah. Yeah, as as they demolish uh, Ipswich, who I think are now finished club. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're one of the finished clubs. Yeah, well, look at the last five minutes, which yeah. is all you need to base it on. Mm. You're only as good as your last five. You're minutes. only as good as your last five minutes. That's what they always say, isn't it? And, so uh, we'll be cheering those stripy owl bastards on, won't we, this weekend? So I suppose that's that's motivation for them to turn their turn their lives around. Mm. Yeah. Um, sorry. Anyway, we're talking about the Welsh. Uh, yeah, loads of nominations for Ampadu, loads for Rodon. Just, they're all more or less just for being good, which is a bit, it feels a little bit... Um, but is it a bit basic, a bit obvious? It, it feels a little bit basic. Joe Rodon gets some credit for headbutting some sense into Junior Furpo. That is true. That's fair. I enjoyed the tweet suggesting that he did a factory reset on him. <laughs> <laughs> He's now an international footballer exactly. as a result of that reset, factory mm-hmm. reset. Yeah, just needs switching off and on again. <laughs> Although Furpo seemed actually all right from it, didn't he? So I think he was, um, he got, it was rolled onto like eye socket, wasn't it? He managed to get, so it's a bit, um, a bit more fragile. Is that part of the head? Yeah, as Mikel says, uh, by the second half, he looked like a middleweight who was trailing on points in the 10th round. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Dan, uh, Dan covers it probably with Ampadu. Absolute machine. So solid defensively, pinging balls like Calvin and reading the game so easily. Signing yeah. of the season. Right then, go on, who's it going to be? Do we, nom- do we just give it to oh. Ampadu for being good? Ampadu for being good. I feel like it's Ampadu or Rodham. Can we come up with a portmanteau where we put their two names together, like Brangelina? Rampadon. Rampadu? Rampadu? Rampadu's quite nice. Rampadon. Bring him back at the end. Rompadu. 
Any of these are quite nice, actually. I like all of them. I can't think. I can't think of their first names. Now. What are the Ethan and Joe? Yeah, Joe. Jethan. Jethan. Jethan Rampadon. It's all a bit Jedward, isn't it? Jethan Rampadon. Yeah. That'll should do. We, won't should it? we give it to Jethan Rampadon? Yeah, go That's on. Fair enough. Excellent. Well done, lad. Uh, lads, lad, son. Are they one out one? They've created him in a lab. One unit, right? Excellent. Well, there you go. That rounds it up, then, doesn't it? Uh, I feel like we need more, more upset, anger. It's all going too well. Don't say that. It's Millwall at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely fine, Rob. I'm not worried. Are you worried? Are you worried about Millwall? Yeah, just normal Millwall worries. I'm quite looking forward to it. I feel like games against Millwall usually make you feel alive. I feel like some of those ones mm. under Bielsa, there were a few comebacks that were quite frightening at times. Mm. Are they are they bringing fans this time? Because uh, I know. Do, do they do that? I don't well, know. I. But it's Sunday, isn't they it? De- as well? They definitely used to, but then at some point they they kind of started bringing about a dozen people, didn't they? I can't remember what it was about. Was it about ticket prices? You should get in touch with your mate on propaganda, the Millwall fan. I might not. <laughs> <laughs> I on. might not. I just feel like go do like karaoke, some style council in the three legs or something. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see actually because he does tend to stay over for away games. See what he gets up to on a Sunday night in Leeds. Recommend the three legs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, for a bit. For a, for, for a bit. It'll get on well enough. The Three Legs was in the news this week. Did you see that? Um, it was reported that a Leeds City Centre pub, the Three Legs, has avoided uh, having its premises licence revoked despite warnings from the police over violent incidents. I see. I've never seen any violence in there. I've just seen, I've seen drunk people doing karaoke is all. You've not seen it get a bit stabby in there, no? No, I've never felt threatened in there. No. But then again, I'm quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we'll wrap it up there, then we'll catch you uh, on the other side. Here's to another three points. We'll be back with Phil to preview the Millwall game in a more professional manner anyway. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast. 